the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time, call to worship. Welcome to the celebration of the 17th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Jesus uses the images of finding a buried treasure, a pearl of a great price to teach about the kingdom of heaven. Surely God's living and loving presence in the world, the church and each of us is a great value. May we discover that anew. And then what? What to do when the renewed discovering of treasure, the pearl of God's reign, God's kingdom. Today our Lord invites us to reflect on that. Our presider is Father Pick. Father's intention is for Cecilia Hegrick. Please stand. Our entrance antiphon, God in his holy place, God who unites those who dwell in his house, he himself gives might and strength to his people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone. Special welcome to our graduates of the parish that we are honoring today for as much as we can with this topsy-turvy year that it has been. So a special welcome to all of you and their families. And so as we gather today on this seventh Sunday, thinking of treasures in the world and what we possess as treasures, let us call to mind our sins as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you preach and reveal the kingdom of heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your wisdom and teaching are great treasures. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are enthroned with the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Please join in our Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the, from the foundation which there is nothing is holy other than thou. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that never, ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord, my God, you have made me, your servant, king to be succeeded by my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. 
Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right. I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has been never been anyone that, like you did up till now. And after you are there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response order psalm is, Lord, I love your commands. Lord, I love your commands. I have said, O oh Lord, that my part is to keep your words. The law of your mouth is to me, to me more precious than a thousand of gold and silver pieces. Lord, I, I love your commands. Let your kindness comfort me according to your promise to your servants. Let your compassion come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. Lord, I love your commands. For I love your commands more than gold, however fine. For in all of your pre precepts I go forward, every false way I hate. Lord, I love your commands. Wonderful are your discreets, therefore I observe them. The re revelation of your words sheds light, giving understanding to the, to the simple. Lord, Lord I love your commands. commands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that, that all things work for good and for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Please stand. Blessed are your Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have been revealed to little ones in the mysterious of the kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia. 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 Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field which a person finds and hides again and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. The Gospel of the Lord. Ask something of me, God says to Solomon today, and I will give it to you. We heard in the first reading, God gave Solomon an incredible gift, the freedom to have exactly what he asks for. And with that freedom, Solomon asks for something that pleases God. He asks for an understanding heart. Solomon, who knows the ways of God and is faithful to him, is already wise in his own ways. Yet rather than increase his own stature, he seeks to honor God as the source of that wisdom. He gives glory to God by acknowledging his reliance upon him. 
and he considers God's love for him as a treasure. We hear of the same freedom in today's gospel parables. And here the freedom is found in the desire to experience the kingdom of heaven. And there's a sort of ironing though, irony. In a certain sense, the person who digs for the treasure of the experience of the kingdom of heaven already owned the treasurer right underneath his feet. Now some people who have a lot of life experience to their credit might say their treasure is getting pretty well spent. But I say I disagree. Wouldn't they consider their life an experience of the love of family and friends made through the years be a treasure? Or having a career that they desired and enjoyed for many years a treasure? Granted, there were times of trial and suffering endured, but the knowledge and fruits gained from these times amidst the treasure of loving memories, I would hope would make that individual a better person because of the encounter with so many people. And I would say that's a treasure that's priceless. So we all have our individual treasures. Now to the graduates, being honoring you today, Cammie, Alexis, Chloe, Ross, Trey. When we Father Tim's picked this date to honor you because we felt we needed to honor you in this topsy-turvy year with so many things, with this pandemic disrupting so many things in these memorable times in your life, we said, well, I, we said, let's go to the July, give some time for planning. People are trying to kind of get back to somewhat normal life, whatever that might be. And with those of Kemper graduates for the baccalaureate mass coming this week, we kind of, it's kind of a build up to that time. We celebrate the Eucharist one last time as a class. And not looking at ahead to the readings or anything like that, I think it's divine providence today then that the first reading spoke of Solomon. He was a wise youth, and in his wisdom that he had already obtained, he asked God for more wisdom to be understanding, leaning on the treasure of his person. A treasure that he hoped would inspire and enliven and open horizons of new plans and dreams for him. And we pray and wish the same for you all. You may not recognize it immediately of having that treasure within you, but that's what's so exciting about the adventure of life. Discovering things about yourself that you hadn't realized before and thanking God, family and friends at the same time for giving meaning to your life. A life that will become more and more enriched in your future days and plans. I also believe that God looks at you, he looks at all of us for that matter, and he sees a hidden treasure in each of us and wonders when we might discover it or when we are going to fully put it to use in our lives. Again, I say that as we heard in the gospel about the merchant who buys the pearl of great price or the person who buys a field with the generosity of their spirit and wanting to acquire it, but knowing that they had the wealth which, which to purchase. But let's focus not on the idea that Christ's parables 
are all about transaction and business deals. I think what Christ was trying to teach the followers then and us today is that the kingdom of heaven, which we aspire to in our lives, and with Jesus' death on the cross, are guaranteed that, is somewhat right in front of us as we encounter others in our lives and we work toward goals, experiencing God's kingdom in the action of living our lives. Gathering wisdom as we seek wisdom and you will learn much more we guarantee that your parents, grandparents, family members will say, oh, there's so much more to learn. But you do have wisdom now. And it's like that pearl which enables you to go out and buy more pearls. So remember this, though. God is present in all that you will do. For we who love God all things every day work together for the good, as we heard St. Paul said in the second reading. Each moment of our work and leisure, our joys, and even in our sorrows, every moment is its own reward when we are motivated by the understanding of the nearness of the kingdom of heaven. And the nearness is Jesus the Son of God. He is the way to heaven. And he is with us here now, as he will always be with us. Ask something of him, and he will give it to you. So graduates, my prayer for you today is that you always know that God is with you each and every day for the rest of your life. You already possess a treasure of the love of God, the love of family and friends. So may that wisdom you already possess continue to grow and deepen as you strive to meet your goals that you have set. And when the going gets rough, fall back on those treasures to help you pull through the tough times so that you may live your lives to the fullest. It's all about encounter forming good, healthy, and loving relationships with people in your lives. So I leave you with a, the refrain from a hymn that my home parish choir, St. James and the Mars, would sing for many years, and it became a parish favorite. And when I became choir director, it was always a good standby song to pull out and sing. The title of it is Where Your Treasure Is. And the refrain, I believe, speaks more than I ever could. And it's short, but so meaningful. Where your treasure is, there your heart shall be. Godspeed to all of you. I invite you to stand and join with me in the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. 
and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Aware that the reign, the kingdom of God, is among us, we can rely on the Holy Spirit's help as we humbly present our prayers of petition. For the church, that we will joyfully proclaim and live our faith in Christ, the eternal and priceless gift from God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For wise leaders and brave public servants, that they will protect the life, liberty, and rights of all people, so that there is a great peace in the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For much needed rain and good weather for growing crops, for safety for all workers, for just employment practices for all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the special needs during this pandemic, comfort to mourners, healing to the sick, peace to the dying, strength to the healthcare workers, wisdom to our leaders, and the courage to reach out to all, the, to all in love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, that our love of God, neighbor, family, and ourselves build up in our domestic and local church community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions each of us have has, for the peaceful rest of all who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, your loving, merciful reign is a great treasure, a priceless pearl. We seek first your kingdom whenever we open ourselves to the Holy Spirit's help, and we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Please stand. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, 
these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may kneel or be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Walker, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, 
and lead us into, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a family member a sign of peace or a wave to others. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. I mean, to be seated or kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. You may be seated. Let us pray. We will consume, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. So we grant, we pray, so grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. A little bit of an exercise this morning to ask you to sit down again. We'll have a few words about the graduates. graduates and families are probably all familiar and other ones who probably read in the bulletin, Pastor Father Fred 
had his school teacher hat on in some of the details for this Sunday as we celebrate and honor you. And he asked you all to complete an assignment. And I'm glad to say that you all met the deadline as he specifically outlined. I think it was noon last Friday. So congratulations to all of you. I believe he's going to give you passing grades. But in just one more way to honor, and many in the parish family know, each of you individual graduates and families probably know of your plans, but we just wanted to kind of share your activities in high school and your future plans just for the community, other communities that are watching via live streamed, and I suppose for the world, so they all know. And gentlemen, just for the sake of courtesy to women, which you will be accustomed to the rest of your life, we will, I will ask the ladies, I will ask the graduates as I read your, before you read your bio, bio, I will ask you to stand up. You necessarily don't have to turn around and look at the people. If you want to, you're more than welcome, but those are, these are always kind of little awkward times, but let's begin with Chloe. Chloe Allman. Chloe is the daughter of Chris and Sherry Allman. She has lettered in academics, athletics, and fine arts, and has received various awards for her extracurricular activities. She was a member of band, choir, Spanish club, National Honor Society, and she cheered at football and basketball games. She will be attending Briarcliff University in Sioux City to study physical therapy and Spanish and will continue to cheer. So congratulations, Chloe. Alexis. Alexis Hahn, she is the daughter of Julie and Christopher Holzing and Mike Mulbauer. She is grateful to her parents for her Catholic education. She is currently working at Garden View Assisted Living as a certified nursing assistant. And Alexis plans to attend DMACC in Ankeny to pursue a career in nursing. Congratulations, Alexis. Cami. Camille Cami Eulenkamp is the daughter of Mike and Ginny Eulenkamp. At Kemper, she was on the dance team for four years, serving as captain her senior year. She was in FFA for three years and served as a chapter officer. For two years, she was on life team and was Kairos retreat leader. She was tennis manager for four years. And Cami is planning to attend South Dakota State University in Brookings, South Dakota, to major in precision agriculture. We'll have to talk about that, precision agriculture and to minor in agronomy and engineering. Congratulations, Cami. And we have the Kenobi gentleman. Let's start with Ross. Ross Kenobi, he is the son of Kim and Russ. Ross was very active in his Kemper High School career. He led her three times in football and twice in golf and he was named most valuable player in his senior year in football. He's active in St. Bernard Parish, especially in helping with many fundraisers. Ross will attend DMACC in Boone, and he plans to major in communications and minor in agriculture. Congratulations, Ross. And finally, we have Trey. Trey Kenobi is the son of Travis and Sarah here in Brito. He graduated from Kemper Catholic, where he participated in basketball, football, and National Honor Society. He has also been active in the Brito Little League as a player, and more recently, as a coach for the Boys Senior League. Trey plans to attend Iowa State University, go Cyclones, and major in accounting and finance. Congratulations, Trey. 
let us all give a round of applause to our parish graduates. Please stand. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Have a wonderful day, and now you may kneel or be seated again one last time for the communion service. Once again, I would remind you that we all will come down the center aisle. For those, I will initially start with some over here that have a little difficulty with walking, but we'll come down the center aisle. Be mindful of social distancing. Keep your mask on to receive the Eucharist, and then you can go off to respective sides and then consume. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. <laughs> 